Greetings from sunny South Africa. <laughs> Such good news again. As I just think on Jesus, as I just contemplate and meditate on his word and what he's done for us on the cross. It is good news. Jesus has become for us our redemption, our righteousness and our holiness. It's all about Jesus, our eyes as believers. And, I, and I'm, these, these videos are for believers. They're to encourage you, to empower you into the core on your life as a beloved child of God. Do you realize that? God, God said, I no longer, no longer refer to you as servants. You are my children. Yes, you serve me and you serve others, but your identity is you're a child of God. You are not a sinner. You are a saint. You are a holy one set apart for God. <laughs> That's good news. And I want to share a little bit today about repentance. And I want to share it in the context of the sweetness of Jesus, my Lord and your Lord and Savior. You know, what he did on the cross is unbelievable. The lamb slain before the creation of the earth, his blood shed that we should be re re redeemed and justified just as if we've never sinned, purchased for God. We're no longer slaves to sin. We are slaves to righteousness. We are no longer slaves to the devil. We are children of God. And that's good news. And repentance needs to be understood in the context of the new covenant. For we are new covenant people. Okay, God relates in covenant. So we are new covenant people. So Jesus came. And in the gospels we see he went around preaching. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Over and over and over, you'll see, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, that's very important that we see repentance in that context. What did Jesus mean? What was Jesus referring to? First of all, the kingdom of God is at hand. Kingdom of God is within us. It's what it says, the kingdom of God within us, Matthew 3, 2. And by the way, I'm going to put the scriptures up as we go. I'm not going to be quoting them all the time, but you can check them out on the screen found yourself in biblical truth and jesus said the kingdom of god is within see the kingdom is the reign and rule of jesus christ in in the heart of man <laughs> that's that's where jesus lives it says jesus has come to live within us by the holy spirit he's seated in heaven but he lives within us a divine mystery it's not about jesus visiting us now and again it's about habitation jesus by the holy spirit the father son and holy spirit live within you and me we are temples of the holy spirit and we have been sanctified we've been made clean and holy otherwise god would not come and inhabit us i want you to hear that do not let anybody tell you you're unholy do not let anybody get you to focus on your sinfulness instead of on your righteousness we have become the righteousness of god in christ jesus we become right with god it's as if we've never sinned our sins are washed away so when jesus said repent what was he talking about yes he meant turn around okay old testament remember there's different covenants old testament the old testament to the jews valid very valid but yet fulfilled in christ the word shub I don't know how to say it exactly. Shub, the Hebrew word, means to repent. So in Isaiah 59, it says a Redeemer is coming in Zion. Zion's always a prophetic picture of the church. He's coming to those who repent of their sin. And as we know, sin means missing the mark. Sin means breaking God's laws. <laughs> sin means being independent from God. Those are, those are all sin and they're all rooted in pride. The fall of man. The pride of man. Yes, we need to we need to turn around. And that word shub, okay, means to revert back to truth, to turn away, to turn around 180 degree, turn different direction, and also to die to stuff. So what is saying when when in the old covenant when they said repent and they talked about repenting, it meant a change of actions. So yes, repentance is linked to a change of the way you do things. But let me just say what Israel found out, that it's no good changing your actions unless you change your heart. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, King David was an adulterer, a liar. He broke the law by eating the showbread. 
And yet God said, this is a man after my own heart. When he was confronted with his sins, he repented. He turned away from, from them. So repentance in the Old Covenant meant to turn around, do 180 degree turns and live differently. It was an action. It was, it was manifest on the outside. But the problem is Israel never turned in their hearts. They never, they never changed their hearts. So as much as the Pharisees did all the right stuff on the surface, inside they didn't do the right stuff. In other words, they, maybe they didn't commit adultery, but Jesus said, even if you look at a woman with lustful eyes, you commit adultery because he knew their hearts were not right. So God is a God who's concerned with men's hearts. Okay, he's concerned with the inner being of man. It's no good being self-righteous and doing the right things and thinking you're right with God if your heart's not right, if you're doing those things under compunction and threat and fear. You can get people to do a lot of stuff if you threaten them. But God is not into that. Israel thought they could get right with God through living out external things, yet their hearts were far from God. And you'll see it over and over. He said, you're adulterous. You prostitute yourself, Israel, with false gods because your heart's not right with me. You see, God is a God who's into transformation of the inner man, the spirit of man that was dead in sin. So the old covenant, old covenant repentance, yes, change of actions. But let me tell you something. There's a new revelation in the, in the, new, in the new Testament. When Jesus went around saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, my reign and my rule. And that's going to come within you. He didn't just, he didn't actually mean a change of actions. He meant metanoia, the Greek word. Metanoia, the Greek word means to change your mind and change your heart. You see, that's what Jesus is concerned about. He's saying repent. It means change the way you think and change your heart towards me. It's about turning to Jesus. Repentance is about turning to Jesus. Let me just say that. It's not about confessing your sins. And it may not be bad to confess your sins, okay? But confession of sins is useless unless you change your heart, unless you are born again, unless you have a renewed spirit within you. So repentance, when Jesus talked about repentance, he was speaking to the Jews and he was actually saying, you think the kingdom of God is about a physical kingdom on the earth. I'm telling you, repent, change your minds because the spirit, Kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. My reign, my rule in the hearts of men and women. <laughs> That's what <laughs> metanoia, repentance, means in the new covenant. A change of thinking, a change of heart. Listen to me, that then leads to a change of action. So it's the inward change in man that leads to the outward change. Okay, you, you, if people tell me, oh, they repent, but they still carrying on in the same old sins. Say, so, nah. So Jesus did go around calling people to repent. But it was a repentance of thinking, not just a repentance of actions. It was a repentance of heart, not just the outward appearance that made you look good in the eyes of other people. But you see, you cannot change your thinking and you cannot change your heart yourself. As much as people try, religious people try to do it through self-effort. You can only change those things truly by being born again by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit coming in you. By giving your life to Jesus. You see, when I, before I was saved and I was a new ager and I was dabbling in all kind of occultic stuff. I, I was not repentant. I, I did not have the right heart. I did not have the right thinking. I wasn't interested in God. I actually hated Christians. And I used to mock Christ. But then one day I realized my life was in a mess and it needed to change. One day I cried out to Jesus. One day I invited Jesus into my life because his love was drawing me. Thank God. And I'm eternally grateful and thankful to Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for saving me. <laughs> One day I got on my knees and I said, Jesus, come into my life. You see, I repented. Did I sit there and confess my sins for hour upon hour upon hour? No, I didn't. But I recognized that my life was a mess. 
I recognized that I was doing sinful, harmful things to myself and to others. And when I asked Jesus to come into my life in response to his love and his grace, that's repentance. I changed my mind. I used to hate Christianity. I used to hate God. And I changed my mind. And it led to a change of actions. So repentance is not the confession of sins. It's a turning away from sinful thinking that leads to sinful actions. And the primary thing we need to repent of, the primary thing the Holy Spirit comes to convict us of, conviction, a sense of the Holy Spirit, not condemnation. He doesn't come to condemn us, but he comes to convict us. As it says in John 16, I've come to convict you be of sin, righteousness, and judgment. I've come to convict you, and it says, because sin, because you do not believe in me. You see, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that sense of the Holy Spirit touching you and calling you to change, is not, not there to point out all your sins. It's saying you're sinning because you don't believe in me. You don't believe I'm a good, kind, and loving God. You don't believe in the work of the cross. You believe in yourself. You believe in your own effort and your own righteousness, self-righteousness. You believe in religion, but you don't believe in me. That's what he was saying. When the Holy Spirit comes to convict, it comes to convict us of unbelief. The primary sin of the fall was that Adam and Eve did not believe in God's goodness. They did not believe God was working for their good in all things, as it says in Romans. They wanted to trust in themselves. <laughs> so repentance is actually changing your mind and believing the truth. Pride gets in the way. And we know that, that unbelief is rooted in pride. I can do it without God. I don't need God. I just need techniques, methods. I just need my strength. I just need my education. But one day you realize that will fail you. And that's happening right now. People's lives are being shaken. People's lives are being shaken and they are coming to an understanding that there's something more in life. They are starting to repent, starting to say, I used to think this old way of life was good. I recognize it now as evil. I recognize the things I do as sinful. I need help. Jesus come into my life. <laughs> and if you've never done that, maybe you're listening to this today and you've never done that. I want to ask you now, before it's too late. Invite Jesus into your life. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Do what I did 30 years ago. And I've never regretted it. <laughs> Ask Jesus. Say, come Lord Jesus. I repent. I change my mind. I acknowledge sin for what sin is. I acknowledge evil for what evil is. And I don't want any part of it anymore. Come and lead me into truth. Spirit of truth. And he will. And your life will change forever. See, that is repentance. The recognition, repentance also means to change our mind about what is good and what is bad. See, unsaved people cannot repent. They, they don't know. They can't recognize sin. They don't know what sin is. They, they, you know, everybody's like doing pornography and everybody's like having affairs. Well, everybody's doing it. They don't see it as sin. But when you're born again, you start to understand and there's a transformation into Christ. We start being transformed step by step into the character of Christ. Everything we need, we have, but we need to work that out in our souls because our minds need to be renewed. As it says in Romans 2.12, we need to get correct belief, correct thinking. We are born again. We are saved. We are holy. But our thinking needs to be renewed. We need to replace lies with truth. Let me just say something. There's, there's a... a <laughs> it's a beautiful story of Jesus leaves 99 sheep and goes and looks at looks for the one the one sheep that had run off and was probably near to death and Jesus takes that sheep and he puts that sheep on his shoulders and he carries that sheep back to the flock what did the what did the sheep do to repent <laughs> Jesus didn't go there and say hey repent or I'm not going to save you you see, it was a kindness of God that led to repentance. You can be sure that when that sheep got back into the flock and was safe and sound, he was repentant or it was repentant or she was repentant. Okay, so the kindness of God leads to repentance, leads to a change of thinking, leads to people turning away from sin, addiction, whatever has bound them up. 
But you see, we need to renew our minds as to what is evil and what is good. Many of us have grown up with worldviews that actually call good bad and bad good. We see it in the world around us at the moment. It's unbelievable the stuff that is being promoted as good. You know, Christianity is being slagged off. Christians are being made to, made, made to, to be bigots. And evil lifestyles are being promoted. And, and that is... That's a whole work of the devil. He's the father of lies. He wants to establish lying lifestyles. But we need to change our mind about our father. You know the story of the prodigal son. When that prodigal son in Luke 15 came back to the father after he prostituted himself and done every kind of abomination as a Jewish father would have known, and actually under the law deserved to be stoned to death, by the way, under the law. But when he came back to the Father, this is a picture of Father God. He started, oh, I've sinned against you. I've sinned. He, he, he wanted to be sin focused. And the Father said, did absolutely ignored that and took him in and embraced him and showed him his grace and his love. So I want you to know, like, it's not our repenting over and over and over and over again that gets us right with God. Okay, when we turn to Jesus, we repent of our sinful lifestyle. It said, this is where I was going. I'm turning away and I'm turning to God. That's a turnaround. That's repentance. And now, Lord, renew my thinking. And he may show you stuff, may convict you of stuff. You know, you'll be doing something. Maybe you're crooking your taxes or stealing from your employer or something, I don't know, and, the, and you just get that conviction of the Holy Spirit. Not condemnation, conviction, saying, Gary or Joe or Susan, this is not right. Okay, and then we turn around and say, yes, okay, Lord. I know when I came into the kingdom, I was a liar, I was a thief, I was immoral. And step by step, the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, Gary, stop stealing from people. Gary, stop lying. Gary, stop your pornography. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The power of the blood of Jesus. And I turned around and said, Lord, amen. I am no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to righteousness. I can say no to these things. I changed my mind. I used to think it was an acceptable lifestyle. Believe it or not, it may sound shocking to you, but I did. But today, Lord, I turn to you i turn to your ways really really good news so the things that jesus came to reveal was that we need to believe in him in acts 3 acts 3 9 it said repent and turn to god so that your sins can be washed away and times of refreshing come from the lord wow times are refreshing your sins washed away by the way that's why we get water baptized as an outward sign of something that took place when we gave our life to Jesus. Our sins are washed away. We don't need to keep on being washed away of sin. We don't need to be sin focused. Jesus wants us to be righteousness focused. This sin consciousness that some Christians are promoting all the time. The self-righteousness self in some of these preachers. You know... That we are not called to be sinful. Yes, we turn away. If, we, if the Holy Spirit convicts us of something, ground, all moral sin, by the way, is grounded and founded in unbelief in Jesus, in his goodness to you or me. We need to turn away from being sin conscious and accept that our sins were dealt with when Jesus became sin on the cross for us. We need to be righteousness conscious because what we're conscious of, we live out. So what are the things that we need to repent of? Just to finish off. First of all, that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, not a physical kingdom. And it's within us. So repent for the kingdom of God is upon you. It's about kingdom. It's about Jesus' reign and rule. It's about us honoring him, us promoting him, us revealing him, us witnessing to him. The kingdom of God, our lives are about establishing his reign and rule upon the earth until he comes again in glory sins yes repent of your sins if you're doing stuff wrong turn away okay we don't have to go over and over we're not we're not catholic 
We don't have to go to the confessional every day. That is a bondage. Let me just say, your sins are dealt with. God remembers them no more. They are washed away in the blood of Jesus. So we don't want to be sinful. But yes, we all make mistakes. Yes, we all do things wrong. Sometimes we fall ourselves, find ourselves falling into sin. Okay? And we need to turn around from it. Get some help. If you're battling with something, get some help. Okay, we need to change our thinking about what is good and what is bad. The world does not determine for us what is good and bad. The Bible does. So if it says certain lifestyles are bad, we need to believe that. Stop trying to justify stuff is, that is evil and calling it good and making out it's good. So there's a repentance. The primary thing we need to repent of is our unbelief in Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. Because many of us carry the suspicion that it wasn't quite enough. <laughs> that we have to add to the work of the cross. No, we don't. We need to appropriate it by grace through faith and live it out. Okay, we also need to repent. We need to change our mind about our image of God. If you want to know the Father, what He looks like, it's not this fierce judge over you anymore. Okay, that's washed away through the blood of Jesus. He relates to you now as Abba Father, Daddy Father. Okay, you're a child of God. <laughs> if you want to know what Jesus, the God looks like, it says Jesus is the exact image of God. So change your mind if you've got a fearful attitude towards God. You need to change your mind or repent about who you and we are. We are children of God. We are not slaves. We are not servants. Yes, we put ourselves in that place of serving God and be a slave to others. But we are children. Our primary identity is the sons of God. And the whole of creation is waiting for us to start manifesting. The other thing we need to stop mixing the covenants, old covenant and new covenant. Turn away from the old covenant. It is fulfilled in the blood of Jesus. Jesus said we are ministers of the new covenant. His blood is the blood of the new covenant. Stop placing yourself under law. The law is good to expose sin and draw people to Jesus. We're not called to live by it. <laughs> so I hope this brings you into an understanding of repentance a change of mind and a change of heart in christ by the holy spirit that leads to a change of actions yes the holy spirit convicts us but he does never condemn us so just know today and i just want to pray today father i just pray in the name of Jesus, for a breaking of every lie and deception that makes people feel unworthy, useless, sin conscious, all the time conscious of their of their inadequacies and, and inadequacies and failure. Sorry, I got the word wrong there. Father, just break that, break that now through the blood of Jesus for every person listening here, and draw them into the blessed good news of the gospel and the finished work of the cross. We are saved by grace through faith. And we live in the seal and the truth of the Holy Spirit.